is the Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of the Pit Stop, where you, the pit crew, you guys are the real star of today's show, because every day you're here to talk about sim racing, and you're always sending in stories, and you always got my back making sure I get things right. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the show. Happy Halloween, everybody. I told you I wasn't going to dress up, but I dressed up. This is, this is old Sean. I had to shave the beard. I didn't have to shave the beard. It was time to let the beard go for a little while to make some decisions and uh, work some public events. So uh, this is my costume for the day. Happy Halloween. Happy hump day to you guys. It is Wednesday. We are working towards the weekend and uh, plenty of talk about in the world of sim racing. So what is going on in the world of sim racing? Yes, yes, I shaved. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had to do it. I look just like Sean Cole. It's like a total turnaround. What do you know? Um, I have a trade show that I'm going to be working, and it's in public. And I just figured that uh, when they hired me, they were probably thinking uh, the clean-cut version of Sean. That was the ironic thing, Brad. Funny enough, I'm like the only guy who shaved for Movember. I uh, have never participated in a Movember. And uh, I thought, well... What do you know? Anyway, I thought it would be fun. It wouldn't take long to grow a new one, so we'll have to see how I enjoy it. But thank you for your opinions on it. I, I am, uh, you guys can love it, hate it, doesn't matter. I'm all ears. Anyway, what is going on in the world of, of sim racing? It made me look badass. Well, I know, it's like I, I shaved it. I'm like, wow, you have a really skinny chin. Um, but anyway, it's okay. It's okay. I can grow another beard. Um... I thought it was kind of scraggly, to be honest with you guys. I, I liked it a little bit, but I thought it was just a little scraggly. Like, there are some people who are just meant to grow beards, and there are other people whose beards just kind of, like, hang off their face versus being incorporated into their face. I didn't feel like mine was incorporated. I felt like it just kind of hung. And like, if I let it grow, it would just keep sticking out, and it wasn't getting full, if you know what I mean. Anyway, this is not... The beard pit this is the sim pit so let's move on to sim racing you guys can definitely uh let me know your thoughts on it though i i, I am taking opinions for the future uh anyway it was a fun project it was the first time in my entire life that i've ever grown a beard i've dabbled with goatees i've dabbled with scruff it was the first time i could say i had a beard i can tell you my mom hated it <laughs> i think she's the only one who hated it mm. All right, all right, this is not the beard pit, it's the sim pit. So, Brian Eckberg had another one of his uh, weeklies. Is this one of his weeklies uh, blog posts at Forza? This time talking about the Hot Wheels cars in Forza Motorsport 7. And uh, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary. That's been kind of an ongoing thing. So, uh, the Hot Wheels avail pack, the Hot Wheels anniversary pack will be available on November 6th as part of the November update for Forza Motorsport 7, that's not Horizon 4, including seven new Hot Wheel cars arriving for free for all Forza 7 players. Here's the list of cars. You got this sucker. You got the Bone Shaker Hot Wheel model. You got the Hot Wheels Rip Rod. Uh, you got the Hot Wheels Twin Mill. That's pretty similar to one of those cars that I remember from my childhood for sure. Um, you've got the 2005 Hot Wheels Ford Mustang. You've got the 69 Camaro Supersport 50th Anniversary Original Version. You've got the Stingray. Isn't that a Stingray? Hot Wheels Chevy Corvette ZR1 50th Anniversary Original Version. And then finally, our, our thumbnail of the day. I love this one, though. The Hot Wheels Volkswagen Beetle 50th Anniversary Original Version. Beauty. You can see they all have the red line uh, tires on it. Anybody who's a Hot Wheels aficionado. Oh, no red lines there. Uh, six of the seven have red lines on them. Um, can't argue with free. Absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Brad. It would seem more appropriate in Horizon, but you certainly can't argue free. Maybe they'll bring them into Horizon as well. Who knows? That could be a later date. Oh, and you get some uniforms. Oh, we didn't scroll enough. All these cool uniforms you get. There you go. Driver suits. Uh, the America's Gran Turismo Nations battle is about to get underway. So here's the schedule for today, actually. Uh, various different times telling you what's going on. Here is a shot of the whole group outside of SEMA. These are all the finalists in the North American GT Sport Nations Cup. Uh, the Mako Shark, the Corvette was known as the Mako Shark. 
The C2 was the Stingray. Thank you, Brad Morrison. You, you are the star of today's show. Um, some Dr. Evil. <laughs> awesome dong. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, and then they have a little video here at Gran Turismo as well, 15 hours ago. Welcome to Las Vegas, home of the America's final of the FIA certified Gran Turismo Championship. Tune in live at 2030. I got the naming wrong, by the way, so there was the official naming of the event. Tune in live at 2030 PDT, Wednesday, October 31st, that being today, to watch the action live from Mark ELV. Anyway, um, hey, Tim, how you doing, buddy? Glad you could make it at all. So what else? Barrett Jackson, there you go. Also, GT Planet has a uh, cool write-up. So going into a big championship like this, here's the GT Planet, and, you know, they're kind of the authority when it comes to Gran Turismo, but uh, who to watch for the FIA GTI, GT Championship, America's Final. I always want to call it Finale. Um, <laughs> Las Vegas wasn't known for GT. It's known for a lot of other things. Uh, what else though? So, uh, in this, you can find out Eddie Gomez, Wardez is his, uh, driver name. He won the series with the Thrustmaster T300, apparently. Uh, Nick McMillan goes by Gumball CGT, 25-year-old. Ricardo Richard Castro, Outlaw Quadrant, 33 years old. Andrew McCabe. We only have 10. We'll go through him. McCabe's 21 years old from Potomac, Maryland. Anthony Felix goes by FT Ant, turns 22 this Thursday from Vacaville, California. I did a bike race in Vacaville once. Vacaville. Vinicius Nito from Brazil. Interesting. Uh, 32 years old in, the, some, in that Who to Watch at GT Planet. Fab, Fabian Portilla. For Portilla, a uh, 27-year-old from Santiago, Chile. Jamal Khan, Racing King 89674. Khan is 20 years old. Eduardo Sepulveda, he's 33 years old from Monterey, Mexico. Talvener Henrique Kuntz from Brazil, it looks like. Curtiba, Curtiba, 24 years old. Tristan Bayless of the U.S. from Santa Rosa. California. I've ridden my bike in Santa Rosa. 34 years old. Bernal Valverde. That's a bicycling famous name, Valverde. 28 year old from San Jose, Costa Rica. Oh, and finally, Igor Fraga, uh, IOF Racing 17 from Brazil as well. He's actually from Kanazawa, Japan, and now lives in Brazil, representing South America in the competition. 20 years old. So, anyway. Those are the 10 guys to watch in the big finals and big opportunities and money and fame to be had by somebody in that group right there. Codemasters talking about a spooky. We're back to the Halloween theme. Didn't see much Halloween theme in the news today, funny enough, but Dirt Rally 2 is coming, obviously. Don't even think about cutting. Hashtag not afraid. Anyway, your first mission, survive the run. Your second mission, survive it fast. And they're talking about the, the spooky aspect of or some of the spooky aspects of Dirt 2. All right, well, you know I can't play the whole thing or what'll happen, so let's just stop that madness, that spookiness. Cody's has blog going, so make sure you're ready for second live F1 eSport New Balance Pro Series event. It's happening. The guys are there. They're now prepping. Gearing up, just a reminder, going into round two, it'll be three races. Brendan Lay, Daniel Bersnay, and Frederick Rasmussen leading in the points with Brendan just killing everybody, 68 to 41 in second place. And that is all going on right now. I believe qualifying happened either today or yesterday. Um, so that is, we'll find out what went on here at the Formula One ga game. They're showing a bunch of different things. So yesterday... Uh, we sh saw the shot from the Adrenaline Factory moving on up, and we start to see Live Event 2 coming soon. Here are the Sauber guys, uh, the Flying Finn and Veloce Alonso, uh, getting ready for tomorrow's event. Here's the Sauber guys, all in a whole group ready to go with the Alpha Romeo. Oh, no, that's Sauber. Um, no, that's Sauber and Alpha. The Alpha and the Sauber guys. 
Uh, there's the arena set up, ready to go. Here is our schedule. So Wednesday, October 31st, that's today, races four through six. Paul Ricard, Silverstone, Spa, Francorchamps. Uh, watch it live on Facebook, 1900 GMT, and on selected TV networks, as of course. Um, so we're going to have to tune in for that. There's a shot of James Doherty um, from James Doherty. Time to start the day the right way. And here we go today, live event two. So sounds like live event one has already happened. Um, 7 p.m. GMT. I don't know the translation on that. Williams showing off their driver ready to go. Um, Sauber uses Alpha. That's what I, I was getting crisscrossed there. Um, anyway, so if you want to tune in, you'll go find that. Graham Carroll and GT2 Topa. So Red Bull talking about their drivers ready to go. Anyway, it is the big day. Round two, races four through six. Uh, Alpha Romeo Sauber. There we go. Alpha Romeo Sauber F1 eSport drivers ready for high speed challenge in round two of the F1 e So this is at automobilesport.com. Um, so yeah, lots going on. This is the weekend time, or now is the time if you want to watch that, and we'll look for some highlights and some final standings, uh, and we'll be rooting for Brendan. Go, Brendan, go. Mazda Motorsport, they had their whole, uh, hot lap challenge, and so that finally came to a close, and in the end, it was Logan Clampett of California who was the overall winner. So congratulations to Logan on winning um what's going to be a really good opportunity for him as we see more and more opportunities coming for sim racers through various things they can win which is just awesome um yes that was the new formula wheel uh you want me to go back and find that again where was that there it is is that what we're talking about i think we've mentioned that a couple times on the show but yes that is the new formula wheel you can see it's got the playstation button on it PlayStation buttons all around on it. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, those could be the covers that Fnatic does. Um, so anyway, that sure does look like a new... Is that a new... Yeah, yeah, the yellow circles, the blue circles are definitely added on. It's got the F1 branding at the bottom, you can see. <coughs> so there you go. Uh, where were you? We were here. Yorkie Guide! I'm always telling you about this one. This one's maybe not as good as some of the others as far as driving performance go, but if you want to know his thoughts and opinions on replay and spectator modes out of Project Cars 2, you'll find that at the Project Cars 2 Twitter page. Excuse me one second. <coughs> Jamie. Uh, that's funny. Erickson, yes. Phone maker, now getting a shot. At IndyCar, apparently. Uh, race trim, talking about yesterday, we missed this, but apparently they have Avia Racing arrives with two new liveries in the popular GT3 class. Head over to the store and select the cars with the number 37. So there's a li link to any of those, but if you're looking for some race room racing going on, that could be entertaining for you. I know a lot of you guys are looking for things to do in race room. That could be fun. Uh, they always have some kind of thing going on there, which is cool. This is kind of neat. Maybe not, still probably not enough to get me to go buy Dakar just yet, but Dakar 18 Roadbook Viewer. Get the app on Google Play Store now, coming to the App Store. Uh, I don't have the game, so I didn't download it, but you can see it here on the video, but something that you can use in conjunction with the game. I've had fun. I think apps and their in integration into games and sims has been a little underused, uh, I mean, we have it the best of, of everyone. We get we can get live telemetry on our phone while sim racing. Uh, it'd be cool to get more of that. I've seen them starting to do that more and more in gaming. That could be one of the future things, uh, depending on, on how things go. But apparently that's a new add-on to Dakar Rally, and that just came out yesterday. The Roadbook Viewer, you can get that at the Google Play Store. Uh, the Crew... They're talking about their latest vehicle drop. This month's vehicle drop. Get behind the wheel of the 2017 TVR Griffith and the 2002 Nissan Skyline GTR BNR 34 Drift Edition. Heiko. Uh, in this month's vehicle drop. So that's going to be new to that. Their scheduled maintenance is happening. Uh, downtime two hours. That's going on. They mentioned two, seven hours ago. So probably done by now. 
And what do you know? It's done. So six hours. It looks like it only took them an hour. It didn't take them two. It took them one hour. So they're back in business, and you will find this month's vehicle drop being the TVR Griffith and the Skyline GTR for The Crew 2. The Crew 2. Uh, 704 games, guys, behind Billy Strange's favorite NASCAR Heat 3. I better stop saying that because people actually start believing me at some point. Um, not Billy's favorite. No, uh, I won't mention Billy on this. NASCAR Heat 3 uh, posted today another article talking about the Road to Miami eSport competition going on. Link here at NASCAR.com. So while you know I'm always talking about NASCAR dot com talking about iRacing. I, I say it all the time. I pat ourselves on the back uh, when that happens. Uh, give credit where credit's due. So NASCAR.com talking about NASCAR Heat 3. Test drive launches as Road to Miami competition heats up. And, you know, the winner in this one's going to win $10,000. And what do you guys think? I was about to put words or say something and maybe I shouldn't say the words. Maybe I should let you guys. Hey, Rhino. <laughs> Maybe I should let you guys say those words. Um, what do you think? Is it hard if it's ten thousand to win the iRacing NASCAR championship, or ten thousand dollars to win the NASCAR Heat championship? What do you think the difference is? Uh, I mean, do you think they're equal challenges? Do you think one bang for buck pays more for the hour, so to speak, to win? Do you think that one is a higher skill set? Do you think one is a higher challenge? Forget the skill set. I am come on, heat versus I racing. Do you think that that winner theoretically proved himself as much as Real Fala proved himself winning the I racing world championship in NASCAR, winning the same ten thousand dollars? I, I'm, you know what? It's fair. They can do whatever they want. There can be easier and harder. I'm just my thoughts, my question. Yes. Oh, that's. Oh, it's that. That's awesome. That's awesome, Care Bear. I, I'll tell you again. If you guys are missing a costume, you're going to a party. There are going to be women be there. Go with the Care Bear. You can't go wrong. You will be the hit of the party with the women at least. Uh, guys won't even know who you are for the most part, which is funny. They'll like come up and make wrong guesses. Like, are you a Teletubby? It's like, no, dude, I'm a Care Bear, but look at all the girls. They want a photo with me. <laughs> anyway, okay, back to sim racing. We are all over the place today. Um, so that is at NASCAR.com, and I'd love your guys' thoughts on the difficulty or equal or, you know, whatever. GT Planet talking about next month's car for uh, Forza Horizon 4. So this one's for Forza Horizon 4, the Hot Wheel Pack for Forza 7, Motorsport 7. But the Huna Truck debuts in Gymkhana 10 next month. So that's going to be the official video, I do believe, Ken Brock. Uh, and then game is also going to have it in. So if you click on that link, it'll take you to the whole article on meat. The 914 horsepower Huni truck coming to Forza Horizon 4 November 2nd. Um, this is my costume for the day. <laughs> um, Rhino, I, I, I thought the same thing. And I couldn't have been more mistaken, by the way. It came on a suggestion of a friend, and I had two other Care Bears with me. Uh, maybe a Smurf. <laughs> it might work, too. I don't know. I can vouch for the Care Bear. No! Interruptions are applauded around here. We, we, we divert all the time. Anyway, here's a shot of the Huni truck at SEMA. So the real deal truck is sitting up there on a podium outside. That'd be out front SEMA. Uh, within a big billboard, you can see it here on the side of the building here, promoting Gymkhana 10. Uh, but I'm looking forward to watching that. I love watching those videos. Um, you know, like many things, none of them will ever be as cool as the first Gymkhana video, in my opinion. That's just the way it is. Uh, but I'm looking forward to watching that badass truck roll. Speaking of Hoonigan, the other Hoonigan, Hoonigan. Thrustmaster is working with Hoonigan at SEMA. So those two dual beasts of rigs that they have there are at SEMA. So if you're going to SEMA and you want to drive some uh, good Thrustmaster equipment on a cool-looking simulator at what is probably going to be a pretty cool booth, 
Uh, that's one thing. Also, it looks like they have this at SEMA. That's that... Uh, oh, gosh, you guys told me the name. I kept forgetting this. The Australian-only Holden El Camino, but it's not an El Camino. Uh, Billy made a sensible suggestion. Yeah, he's pretty good at doing that. Yeah, good question, Darren. I don't know. I, I don't know what they're using as a minimum for that. Only PC ran even know what iRacing is to an extent that is true, Tim Spatial Dragon. Um... Yeah, Billy, that's something I've thought about a lot of uh, prizes and things, seeing it go a little further back. Um, I'd also like to see some smaller prizes made available for lower series champions. Like, I mean, let's not turn this into a beat-up iRacing day, but, like, maybe it would be cool if they gave away some credits or a T-shirt or a, a sticker to the winner of the Skip Barber series or the, the Radical series or whatever other series. Maybe there should... Um, maybe, maybe they should have more prizes available to, to promote more racing. It's a Ute! Thank you! It's a Ute! That's right. Hey, Sean, hop your... I am well, Mark. I am doing very well. Thank you. Uh, there's the blue and the red version of that. You'll find that at the SEMA booth. Uh, for the Hoonigan booth at SEMA 2018 with Thrustmaster guys being there as well. You can go drive that thing. Um, <laughs> Tim's going as an old man in boxer shorts, a t-shirt, knee-high black socks, racing shoes, and gloves. I'm sure that would qualify as a, a costume. A Malou? Is it a Malou? <laughs> a Malou? Here's a shot of, uh, uh, Bono Hui. Sorry, I'm spacing out. There is Mono Hui. Bono, Mono Hui. Bono Hui. Uh, McLaren Shadow Driver sitting in the uh, competition. So just another post of what's going on over there. Um, I expect more. There are the team standings. That's something we haven't talked about. A you <laughs> Did you say you? Uh, Care Bear Outfits for Winners. There you go. Mm. All right. Here are the team standings. We've talked about the individual standing, driver standings, but... Here are the team standings going into round two. Uh, three races down, seven to go. So if they're knocking out another three, does that mean there are three after that and then the grand finale? Is that how short the eSports season is going to be? That would be kind of interesting. Uh, that's really cramming a lot into a, 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 a small. That would be four different events. Pick posted in. Let me check out what Doug's got for us. <laughs> what what is this Doug? Is this your is this what Doug Hawley is uh doing for Halloween? Is that Doug Hawley 2018? Uh too funny. The two Utes. <laughs> Cousin Vinny. If you have not seen the movie Cousin Vinny because you're too young and you don't even know what we're talking about, it's a must see movie. I, I highly recommend it even uh, even though it's quite old at this, this at this point in time. Okay, what else? What else? Moving right along. MotoGP, they had their finals. Any of you watch it? I didn't get a chance to watch it. Um, reigning champ, we remember his name. I remember this guy's name. Trastevere, 73, seals victory in semifinal number two. There he is getting the BMW driving experience uh, certificate. Uh, up on the stage, being awarded his prize. They have a video there of the full show that went on, presenting the whole eSport for MotoGP. So you'll find that at, of course, eSport.MotoGP.com. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? How's the move? Are you done? Are you done moving? Uh, true achievements, just blow through some of these Super Pixel Racers achievement list has been revealed. So if you are interested in the achievements, I know there are people who are like just achievement hunters when it comes to the console gamers forget whether it's sim racing or not just if you're a console gamer that's your thing and a lot of us are uh achievements are what we do i call them achievement hunting here's the full list of achievements that you can get out of that game you'll find that at true achievements motorsport.com always covering esport nowadays anyway here's a whole article you know we saw the auction it wasn't an auction to be able to race against william byron on i race on i racing but William Byron's NASCAR experience comes both on and off the track. 
uh, and a whole write-up from Motosport, including some simulator action video. Ooh, let's check this out real quick. It's kind of cool. Oh, look at that sim. Oh, no, F your ad. F your ad. I thought Halloween was no ads. I didn't know that. Hey, what the f No! Turn all this crap off! What a horrible website. <laughs> Here we go. Congratulations. Congratulations, Brandon. That's awesome. All right, so there he is. There is <laughs> William Byron. Simulator 2 video. You can find the full write-up at uh, motorsport.com. Motorsport.com of all places. So that is very cool. Um, Google Translate. Oh, look at that. Our good buddy, Mitchie Hoyer. I don't even know what the article is. It was really short, but it was at Baden Online. I'm at Google Translate, which means sometimes I don't even get the whole thing. But Mitchie Hoyer, the simulation racer. There he is in full concentration mode. When the cars are at the start in Formula One, the teams have already compete, completed several miles on the... Wait. The teams have already completed several miles on the track in the simulator. Wilt Statters, Mitchie Hoyer, who has been Formula 3 simulation racing driver since March of this year, also dreamed of this job. Um, what they're referring to there is that Mitchie does some side work for a Formula 3 team. I don't know if he talks about it that much. But um, there is a write-up at Baden Online where you can probably find more about that. But uh, yeah, another sim racer turned, you know, making a living or getting opportunities based on it. Um, yes, the this is my Halloween costume of the day. F your ad. <laughs> Alt char. Alt char. Top most anticipated upcoming racing games of 2019. Uh, I look like a grown-up with a job. <laughs> the well-played well Spatial Dragon. Uh, so anyway, there are some obvious ones that came to mind. So for you, when I bring up the topic of the most anticipated racing games of 2019, uh, what comes to your mind? Uh, what's the first? I mean, the picture there, you should know that picture by now. Do you know what that is? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, number one on their list, Dirt Rally 2. I mean, <clears throat> that de belongs on the list. Assetto Corsa Competizione. Of course, GTR 3. Totally could have forgot about that one coming, but yes, it's coming. Trials Rising. You know, I'm always looking for fun diversion games. If they can also be a sim or, or a, an automotive sport title it makes me even happier trials rising could theoretically be one of those distance oh i gotta tell you i don't know if i want to that looks like a, a like a, a gillette electric razor of some sort um so no not for me drift 19 haven't even heard of this one the realistic drifting simulator drift 19 is the first and only realistic drifting simulator heiko two drifting topics in one day what do you know um it says acc at the bottom um <laughs> the picture is oprah she's gone through a big change uh i missed something there sorry <laughs> being grown up with a job sucks don't do it Anyway, uh, but yeah, cool article. It made me kind of think. I was, I never, I wasn't expecting Drift Nineteen. Don't care about distance. Trials Rising. I'm, I'm looking forward to. I have to make sure I go get when I can. GTR Three. I gotta tell you, I'm really looking forward to Simbin's GTR Three. Competizione. We talk about that nearly daily on the show here, and of course, Dirt Rally. So there you go. Those are the most anticipated driving games. I don't disagree with the list that much. Um. Anyway, uh, Sim SSRG is the name of the company, and this is at SimRace Hardware News Test Blog, showing off the Holland, built in Holland. Holland is the country of specialties in terms of sim racing since the brand SSRG, through a few shots, presented a new pedal board that is today in the prototype, prototype stage. Anyway, but this is the prototype hydraulic pedal set that will be coming, that is being worked on out of SSRG Holland. So that's kind of cool. 
Hey, Josh. Josh, Josh. Um, drifting down the river. Drift looks good. Yes. Yeah, let us know. I'll try to get it as well. Um, no, no, we don't hate. You know, D1, we try not to hate. We might like and love certain things more than others, but I, I really do try to embrace all of Autos Motive gaming. Um, no hate. No hate. Drifting's cool. Jensen and Pinto into the finals of the McLaren Shadow. Uh, we've talked about both of those when they won them, but simracer.es has a write-up talking about that as well. I'm just, you know, these competitions, I mean, you think of how many people you win. These guys do deserve um some recognition that's for sure it's it's no it's no small feat to win any serious sim racing competition at this point we are so many there's so many talented drivers that you know geez even being on the first page of a leaderboard is is remarkable hi go there you go you see all the drifting we're talking about the verge talking about lenovo i saw this on my feed on my phone as well lenovo is now licensing sony's patents for its playstation vr copycat headset so that's how it works in the industry you can't get it or you just go buy it from the other guy and put your name on it uh there you go but that's lenovo's plan for uh a vr um what else we got this is job sector three we just talked about sector three no we didn't did we talk about sector three yeah we did we talked about it. we're always talking about it but uh here are some other jobs in the motorsport world so sector three is located in Sweden, and they are currently, you know, the, the guys behind Race Room and those those um, those efforts. Anyway, but they're looking for a C++ programmer, C hashtag, I didn't, back-end programmer, web back-end programmer, and a front-end programmer, um, and it looks like three of those jobs are answering in Sweden, one of them in the UK or Sweden, but if that's up your line, they are hiring. I, I like telling you guys about the jobs in our industry because it's great to work in our industry. This is our hobby. You know, they say uh, you want to never want to never work a day in your life. Do what you love. Uh, so if you love sim racing, get a job in sim racing and you won't feel like you go to work every day, in other words. So I also like to tell you about it because it shows who is working. When I'm showing you that list of Codemaster hiring, what, 20 people? That means they are working hard on stuff. Uh, when Sector Studios, Sector 3 Studios is hiring four people, it means they're pushing. They're looking for people. They're expanding their their uh, uh, group and really C Sharp. Thank you, Splendid. Thank you for that. I knew it wasn't C hashtag. C Sharp. That's what that is. Uh, maybe you qualify for the job. Obviously, I don't. <laughs> if you have to ask, you don't qualify. This came in right before I went live, so I didn't get a chance to read this, but I guarantee you I will read it all i can really go by is like the first line and what i've read in the title but sim racing observer jake sperry um gosh if any of you guys remember austin ognoski he was like the guy who only had a negative view on sim racing and i'm like i love reading what he has to say but it's always purposely negative i feel like jake sperry is the guy who pulls no punches he is looking for the faults to point them out but he does it in a more positive way which means that I'm a huge fan of Jake Sperry and what he writes at Sim Racing Observer. And he is talking about something that has probably occurred. We, the endurance guys, have all talked about this just casual conversation. But VRS GT moves to the GTE cars for 2019. iRacing backed into the corner is the title. And any huge iRacing fans know that they lost the license to the Blanc Pain series. That went to Assetto Corsa Competizione. And how is that going, going to affect endurance races i had conversations with people who who thought that would be the death of endurance race championships in i racing and it proved that it was not the case and in i racing's case they looked at it as an opportunity to not have as many rules which could be a good excuse for not having the tracks of blanc pain uh to do a complete series like they do with the nascar series but needless to say this article goes on to talk about balance of performance and other factors that have affected the GT3 series up until now and how that will affect the GTE series moving forward. And all the guys who sim race with me on the uh, Sim Pit Endurance team, they know uh, that there's a difference between the cars and those changes are affecting us moving forward for next season as well. 
Um, anyway, but a cool write-up, and you'll find that at Sim Racing Observer. I'll probably read through it a little bit when I'm done. Uh, this came for me from Theodore, one of our fans, and this is a write-up from a company and from Force Field, some photos. Here's a photo of some boxes and some packaging, and when we go to the website, this is the Force Field by Realtius. Realtius. And this is this is like a poor man's G-seat. Uh, G-seat is by Sim Experience. It's got like actuator movement giving you G-forces, G-seat. A uh, similar type of thing. This is like the vest we talked about the other day with little things that are going to give you haptic feedback in various spots while you play various different kinds of games. But the force feels $189. I tested something identical to this. Well, not identical, but the exact same principle. A cushion that you put on your existing seat that had vibrating motors throughout it and a control box. I, this is something, honestly, I sat in and tested uh, a seat like this. Excuse me, I had an itch. Could have been hair that had fallen down. Uh, I drove on one of these things like, I don't know, eight years ago? Lugged it around for a couple of years in hopes that it would someday get the development. It just never did, and I ended up throwing it away. Uh, but the force feel might be worth checking out, and they are now ready to start shipping those suckers out. So that's kind of a game changer. Uh, this one isn't as exciting as some of the other ones I've shown because it's really just somebody finally getting themselves sort of a built-up uh, chassis. I don't know what this is. This looks like something you can buy. I don't think this is a DIY that he did. Um, but it's a stand. Yeah, it's a wheel stand combined with a rig on some kind of a platform and a Fanatic setup. But just somebody... And showing off their new rig, which I'm always encouraging you guys to do. If you want to show off your rig, uh, just email me, Sean, S-H-A-U-N, at thesimpit.com, and I'll be sure to feature your rig on the show. So that's the end of the news, but I do have one other thing I want to send in. Christian Clark is a guy I know from working with CXC, and he actually sent in this picture here. And what that is, is a picture. This is a friend of a friend of his who went to the U.S. Uh, uh, Grand Prix, and this is the manual from the U.S. Grand Prix with Lewis Hamilton on the cover. And the reason I'm showing you this, and the reason Christian sent it to me, is because inside of this, you want to know where where money's being spent. You want to know where people are trying to find customers, trying to find new market. Well, what if I told you Fanatic was spending the money to be in the actual brochure, the actual catalog, the actual uh, program for the USGP. But there it is, right inside of the USGP program, you are going to find the Feel It Fanatic. And they're showing off, they're not even showing off a podium, by the way. That's just a CSL. That's a basic set. But that is where advertising dollars are going. Um, and I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, that thing was super duper old. Uh, it was weird. It, I mean, it had a lot of potential. I mean, and and, and Darren Ganji of Sim Experiences in the audience, um, it has a lot of potential. Hence, you guys developed a G seat, which I've driven variation. I've driven uh, G seats, and and in theory, it's an awesome thing. Uh, it's just execution, and will it really really work? Um, so anyway, um, D one, that's you. Hey, Christian. <laughs> I didn't know D1 was Christian. I need to put my, uh, I need to put, I have, where's my chit, my, my, uh, cheat sheet? I need a new cheat sheet. Um, thank you, Christian. Thank you for sending it in. And I thought that was a really cool story. And then what I'm going to finish with right now, speaking of sim experience, but I just like to keep you guys informed of what's going on in the background. As you know, with the Sim Pit channel here, I am trying to get reviews coming out at a much faster rate than we've doing, been doing in the past. Scaled back some of my streamed races and things that were actually costing a lot of time and trying to really focus on reviews because I think that's what we do best. I think we do a show like this where we hang out and talk sim racing like good friends and I think reviewing is really uh, uh, where we excel. So anyway, that is the AccuForce wheel by Sim Experience. It is on the rig being tested. That one will take a little bit of time, so I'm going to work on some other stuff in conjunction. But just to give you an idea, there is, I, in fact, you can see something in the background there. If you have a very good eye, you'll be able to something else in the background, and that'll let you know. 
Uh, but there are a lot of things going on in the background. We're going to keep getting reviews out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to tell a friend what we're doing so we can continue to grow because if we don't grow, then we can't do more. If we grow, we do more. So anyway, thank you so much for being part of the team. Thank you for being here every day. Happy hump day to you. Get out there, do some racing. Happy Halloween. Get out there, do some Halloween and uh, whatever that is that you do on Halloween that makes you happy. But I'll be doing my Halloween in my new costume. That's going to do it for today. Thank you for being here. This is The Simp Hit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.